All right, everyone. I get a lot of questions about Westside Barbell and how people can incorporate that into their training uh, because sometimes the books and the articles are A, not geared to the average person and B, a little bit complicated to understand. Uh, so as a lot of people know, I've spent a decent amount of time at Westside Barbell and also taking my time to study their methods and the methods their methods came from. So I'm going to break down today how you can incorporate some Westside-esque training into your, into your workouts. This is not going to be made uh, for geared powerlifters or powerlifters at all. Um, this, is, this is meant for average lifters going to the gym who want a little bit more interesting training methods that are a little bit, maybe a little bit more advanced than what they're doing currently um, and are interested in what they've heard about Westside. So Westside is going to break down into four days over the week. Your first day will be your dynamic effort upper. Your second day will be your max effort lower. Your third day will be your max effort upper. Your fourth day will be your repetition effort lower. So this is, you're going to notice some differences going forward if you've read the West Side stuff. Um, first of all, I like to do my days Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. That's just me personally. I find it works better for my schedule. It's the same timing, the same 72 hours between workouts as West Side. I've just found those days a lot more convenient. The other big change from the traditional West Side method is a repetition effort lower instead of a dynamic effort lower. I'll explain that as I go through. So, as a simple breakdown, max effort lifting is going to be very heavy. That's your heavy day for both upper body day and lower body day. We're going to do a four lift rotation on both upper body day and lower body day. That's what I like to do with clients. I found that works very, very well when I'm training people. So for max effort upper, max effort lower, you're going to pick four lifts. I don't care what they are, they're four lifts you want to get better at. So for lower body, it could be Front squat, back squat, sumo deadlift, conventional deadlift. It really doesn't matter. Same thing for upper body. Barbell overhead press, bench press, incline bench, three board bench. The lifts are irrelevant. You're just going to rotate through them. So month number one, every Tuesday, I'm going to be doing a three rep max. Um, so three rep max squat the first week, three rep max conventional deadlift the second, three rep max front squat, three rep max sumo deadlift. So the first week, I'm going to go through that, or the first month, I'm going to go through those rotations, hitting all three rep maxes. The second month, all two rep maxes. The third rep, or the third month, all one rep maxes. Same thing for the upper body day. Whatever the lifts are that you pick, whatever the lifts are that you like, that you want to get stronger with, three reps, two reps, one rep maxes over those months. So a full training cycle will take you about 12 weeks. And for your dynamic effort, you're only going to have a dynamic effort upper, and you're going to have to pick between bench press and overhead press. I don't think it particularly matters which over the other. It's going to depend on what you want for your goals. Different to the standard West Side template, I don't recommend using accommodating resistance, meaning bands or chains, in the beginning, and I don't recommend using the wave load. I'd go 70 to 75% of your one rep maximum in whatever lift you happen to choose. I do eight sets of three, just like it says in the book, with under a minute of rest. But I would I would take the same weight week after week after week until you retest your one rep max in month number three. Then you can reset your percentage. But focus on just moving that weight fast. You want to get good at applying force to 70-75%. That should also yield some decent strength and hypertrophy gains, being the percent is a little bit higher than most people would have. Um, again, the big idea here is to keep tight. And keep exploding into the weight, be it overhead or bench press. Um, the last day I'm going to run through right now is the repetition effort. So that's your Saturday lift. That's normally where the traditional template would have you doing a dynamic effort. I think dynamic effort lower body is fairly misunderstood and not as applicable to the everyday lifter as a repetition effort. So I'd do one of two things. I'd do front squat and I'd do that for maybe... 5x5, five 5x10, by five, five by 5x8, by whatever you feel like. Get some decent work in, depending on how heavy you want to go. Or I do something sports specific. If you're a rec league volleyball player, maybe that's box jumps, depth jumps. Maybe you want to do sprints if that's applicable to your, to your sport. You've got some wiggle room there, but front squats are always good. I would do front squats Olympic style with the tightest torso possible, keeping your torso as vertical as possible while you do them. Um, so that's how I break down these days. As for the structure of these workouts, your upper body and lower body day are going to be structured fairly similar. For your upper body day, regardless of what day it is, dynamic effort um, or max effort, 
you're going to have your main lift. So for dynamic, uh, for your dynamic effort day, that's eight times three, and you're 70 to 75 percent. For your max effort, that's either a three, two, or one rep max on one of your four lifts in the rotation. The second movement, you're going to do something similar. If you just overhead press, do something overhead press S. If you just bench press, if you just pull up, whatever you happen to happen to choose. I do that for more reps. I do at least three sets, three to six sets of anywhere from five to 20 reps, depending on what you feel like. The next movement you're going to go to is the opposite. If you bench press, row. If you overhead press, pull up. And do a lot of work similar to your secondary movement. You're going to do the same rep scheme, set scheme. Three to six sets, five to 20 reps. Pause. Okay, so on to your last two lifts of the day. After you've got all the solid work in, you're going to pick whatever body parts you want to grow. And it really doesn't matter, again, what that happens to be. Maybe you feel you want more bicep, more pec, more shoulder, whatever. Whatever you look at your physique and feel that you need. Hit four to five sets, 15 to 20 reps, and pump those muscles like crazy. Short reps. Um, relatively close to failure, maybe five to one reps um, away from failing on those lifts, and just get a wicked, wicked pump. Okay, on the lower body day, same thing, you're going to have your main movement, either your repetition effort day, a front squat, or something sport specific, or performance specific to you, or your maximum effort lower, which is one of your four lifts in our rotation, going three, two, one rep max. Then we're going to immediately go to an opposite movement. If you squat a deadlift, if you deadlift, uh, do a squat. Deadlifts I really like for low reps. Um, if it's a deadlift straight from the floor. Um, this will be opposite from your 3 to one rep maxes, though, because you'll be doing that the next week. So I'd go relatively light, maybe focus on speed, focus on form. Or do, say if you did a squat, do a stiff leg deadlift. And you do higher reps, do a glute ham raise, do a good morning. Up to you. After that, go to a unilateral exercise. One of my absolute favorites is one leg reverse hypers. You can also do step ups I really like, lunges, single leg leg press. Again, this is all going to be up to you guys. Unilateral exercise, lots and lots of reps. Uh, so it'll blow you apart. If you want to do 100 consecutive walking lunges, you'll know you did some work. After that, you're going to go to something gluten hamstring dominant. If you have a GHR or a glute ham race, if you have a reverse hyper, pound those out. If you don't, you can do um, body weight. Uh, glute, glute ham raises, you can find a bunch of stuff online, how to use a BOSU ball and a power rack to do some glute hams. You can do band good mornings for high reps, you can do glute bridges, pick some glute and hamstring and go after. Finally, you're going to go to ab work. Ab work, I love ab wheels, plank variations aren't bad. Um, be creative, there are ab exercises you can do on the reverse hyper. Uh, my go-to typically is, uh, is an ab wheel. I also like happy babies, you can YouTube those or ask in the comments. Um, on Facebook or YouTube, and we can demonstrate that for you. Um, but that's basically how I structure Westside Barbell S training for new people who aren't powerless. Um, so, one of the big differences compared to Westside is a small number of lifts that you're going to be rotating through. The reason for that is guys at Westside are fantastic weightlifters. They've been doing this for a very long time, and they're very good at lifting weights. They, they know the form, and it's down for them for a lot of exercises. Here you're going to be taking four lifts and you're going to be practicing them very regularly so you can get good at these lifts and get strong in these lifts before you start expanding your repertoire. Um, the other thing here, make it fun. Like, be creative with the lifts you want to do for your hypertrophy work, for your glutes, for your abs, for your unilateral work. Do what you feel like. There's going to be days you come into the gym and you just feel like doing super high rep dumbbell shoulder presses. Maybe you want to do a farmer's walk. Maybe you want to do an atlas stone. Do anything, anything you feel like. Like just have fun with your training. Um, the other thing, the the important thing about Westside with getting better is everybody hears the catchphrase: work on your weaknesses. I might make another video to talk more about this, but it's weaknesses aren't always what they look like. Just because you can't lock out a deadlift doesn't mean your lower back's weak. Maybe your position's wrong. Maybe you your hamstrings are weak and you can't apply enough force to get through that sticking point. To go into causing a weakness to be your weakness. Um, one of the biggest advantages that the lifters at Westside have is that they've got a room full of experienced lifters figuring out their problems as they go. And like I said, it's not always the obvious culprit. Um, a lot of times, sticking points of problems come from starting position 
and the ability to apply force quickly so you can carry yourself through whatever your sticking point or problem might be. So that's basically it. Um, have fun, train the way you want to, and enjoy your workouts when you're under this template. Um, if you have any questions, comments, I'd be more than happy to hear them on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, and that's pretty much it on Westside-esque training.